Hello there, you welcome to the only show that brings you happenings in the world of diplomacy and international relations. The week has been busy and we have been trying as much as possible to catch up with all the events from Ghana's diplomatic circles and the rest of the world. Now to begin with, of course, 24th of October, every year marks UN Day, um, UN Charter Day, and we have a responsibility to bring you closer to the partnership between the United Nations and Ghana. This is a global celebration, so everywhere in the world this happens every year. And this year's is happening on Tuesday, and of course the biggest event among the many, many activities that have been lined up is the hoisting of flag and the re- affirmation of commitment to uphold um, the shared values and democracy between the United Nations and Ghana, which will happen at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. It's all right here. I had the opportunity on the back of that to sit with His Excellency Charles Abani, the UN Resident Coordinator to Ghana, to learn more about the essence or the significance of the UN Charter Day celebration and why it is so important that we continue to build towards multilateralism. I think just a growing sense that unless we address some of the structural inequalities mm. uh, around the global financial architecture, for example, that we are not going to enable countries to, uh, particularly developing countries, to escape the poverty trap and come forward. And, and so, as I explained earlier on, the big issues around the debt crisis mm. and being able to have the fiscal space to actually be able to, on the one hand, grow but on the other hand, ensure that everybody is taken along. These are complex challenges that have complex dimensions at the global level, mm. at the regional level, at the sub-regional level, and of course, even at the national uh, and local level. And uh, our job is, the, I guess, the difficult one mm. of being able to help to facilitate, if we're doing our job right, the conversations that need to take place so that everybody's priority is heard uh, and everybody's uh, needs are taken into account while recognizing that we live in a world of finite resources, we live in a world of finite capacity, mm -hmm. and actually getting that balance right, um, is, there is no simple silver bullet answer to solving these problems. So I think for us, mm -hmm. um, the Sustainable uh, Development Goals and the Summit um, identified six areas of transformation many of which are captured mm -hmm. um, in Ghana's own uh, priorities. Um, looking to uh, how do we create decent jobs and ensure social protection? How do we transform education? How, how do we work on food systems? Mm -hmm. and we know that food systems uh, goes well beyond just planting and eating, but actually the whole systems, including the, the opportunities of the Africa continental free trade for greater trade on these basic commodities between countries and enabling everybody from cocoa farmers mm. to peanut farmers to get a fair price and create, if you like, the value chains that ensure that those who are producing the most actually reap most of, of the benefits. Mm. Of course, climate change I've spoken to, uh, just energy transitions that recognize energy poverty on the one hand, but also a need to cap temperature peaking beyond uh, 1.5 degrees as soon as possible and certainly by 2050. Um, these are some of the challenges that the globe uh, faces. And if we all focus a lot of our efforts and, uh, around these, then of course we will, we will make progress. Um, we have challenges to global democracy being questioned, particularly mm. on this continent. I think a, a recent survey um, has shown, I think CDD were recently sharing the Afri, Afrobarometer to show that actually the overwhelming majority of people still have confidence uh, in democracy. Of course, there are challenges to that process. Right. But, but absolutely, that democracy still stands as the model that we know that can work and certainly has been working for Ghana. Mm. And, and next year, there will be another opportunity uh, for Ghanaians to go to the poll to express uh, their, their sense of who needs to lead this nation and how to lead this nation. Um, our role will be to support that in whatever mm -hmm. way we are called to, but also to 
ask that, that it's done peacefully um, in a way that actually works for everybody. I want to call on political parties mm -hmm. particularly to think about the role and space women will play in that democracy. That's very uh, important. I think uh, we live in a country, the 2021 census uh, told us that actually the majority, yes, by a slim, I think, 0.7 percent, are actually women. Uh, currently very underrepresented at 14%. We need gender parity. Uh, um, and so actually walking, walking the talk mm. and walking towards this uh, ambition mm -hmm. will be an important part alongside having peaceful, uh, transparent elections uh, in 2024. I must um, say that indeed your job is a very... Um, Herculean one and it's a very very difficult one um, let's talk about 78th anniversary of the United Nations I, I remember when I started I, I talked about the United Nations General Assembly meeting in New York the United States of America where global leaders met on one stage in one room to discuss problems that we are faced with globally and all of that um, going forward I mean one would ask 78 years of what you know which is pretty difficult for one to just physically put it together or say that okay so this is what it is and now i can see it it's very you know i can see it's evidence in my hands you know so i can be able to judge the un based on that but what we also forget is on a day-to-day -day basis the improvements that we collect and some of them you cannot really quantify but you know that this is progress works that might have started years back have led us to where we are today and so we can see results there are some areas that we can also see results but we do know that things are happening over there do you think we should because somebody asked me so why is the un still in existence in the you know midst of all these problems and i asked would you rather we collapse the United Nations, then think of what would happen even without um, an elderly person in the room or someone to actually put us on track when we feel like we are going wayward. How can we get, because when you talked about building confidence, how can we build, get people to really begin to believe in the visions of the United Nations? This year's theme, uh, rebuilding trust and reigniting commitment to multilateralism is is very apt right. um i think that the truth is that there are challenges there and there are. will continue to to be challenges mm -hmm. globally but the truth is multilateralism has certainly demonstrated its capacity to solve global problems imagine a world of covid without multilateralism in terms of even the science and the research mm -hmm. and the technology and the delivery mechanisms that enabled us very rapidly as a globe to overcome uh, the COVID pandemic. In the absence of multilateralism, this would not have been possible. Do you think countries still believe in multilateralism? I, I absolutely think because that I've there is. Because I've had some leaders actually say that multilateralism is a threat. Uh, it, it may be a threat, as is democracy, but we all believe and we understand that this is fundamentally the way we must go. Now, the negotiations and contestations about what that multilateralism is, is where the debate is. And I think that's a healthy debate. That's not a, a, a bad debate. We don't want a one-size-fits-all answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you want to sort of stretch back over 78 years, I think from the very beginning, the Declaration uh, uh, of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a raft of conventions mm -hmm. that global leaders have sat together and agreed uh, peaceful resolutions of a number of crises and peace and prevention, which is at the core of the Secretary General's uh, agenda. Um, there are so many more crises that would exist today were it not for mm. the United Nations, the platform it provides to nations to actually uh, discuss uh, and reach consensus on, on these matters. And indeed, there is no doubt that the world is a better place for the United Nations. Uh, can it be better? Absolutely, it can be better. Mm. And indeed, um, let me use this opportunity to talk about 2024. 2024, the Secretary General is calling for the Summit of the Future. Summit of the Future. The summit of the Future. And the Summit of the Future, people have often asked, so how is this different from you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, decade of action? How is this different from the uh, SDGs? It is not different, but it is actually the next stage. 
um, and it's a recognition that sustainable development on a global scale still has challenges and that we must discuss what are the ingredients mm. of sustainable development for all. That peace and security and if, indeed the mechanisms for peace and security remain a challenge and indeed a number of countries, Ghana is just ending its very uh, meritorious service uh, yet again on the Security Council and has made this point that the reform of that Security Council um, is really imperative in order to make it uh, more inclusive. We also live in a world where technology, science, uh, the digital transformation is about to cause another kind of seismic mm, shift mm. Um, in, in global relations, in inequality, and these things need to be discussed. We have a world in which young people uh, are the greatest part of the population and future generations, if you take on board the impact of climate change, uh, their future is at stake. Um, and of course, as you have talked about here, what global governance mechanisms do we actually need? Do we need them? Absolutely. Can the existing mechanisms that we have be reformed? Um, of course they can. And that is the essence of actually next year's um, summit, summit, summit of, the of the Future. And we hope that Ghana will, as it has always done, uh, play a significant role in the thought leadership mm. that, that helps to shape that, particularly from uh, a developing world uh, context. Uh, we know the history of the United Nations and how it arose out, out of the Second World oh, War. Wow. And many of the structures and systems that were put in place were appropriate at the time and have evolved now. And so the Summit of the Future is a real opportunity to have those conversations about these big issues that I've talked about, about what does human rights really mean? Mm. While we have a global framework, what are the different journeys that different countries, that different peoples, that different identities um, want to take mm. on that journey. We all recognize, and I don't think any nation in the world um, struggles with the fundamental rights that, that every human being uh, on this planet, irrespective of any kind of dimension you want to bring, that they earn and deserve. But that journey is a conversation. And I think inherent in any judgment um, of the UN mm. um, should be, is the UN a good conversation space because that is what it is a conversation space where nations come together to agree if you like the common minimum and to act on that common minimum and to recognize the diversity of perspectives that exist out there across the globe and seek and find ways to gain consensus and build forward as one collective and that is not an easy uh, task to achieve. <laughs> it is. Uh, and it's also an evolving task. Um, the state of, of human rights in 1945, the conversations that led to the uh, formulation of the Geneva Convention, before that did not exist. Mm. And so we're building. Uh, but we're also changing and we're also evolving as a people. And we're also reprioritizing certain things. Mm. And the important thing is that many people live at the bottom of that Maslow's uh, pyramid and need, and some of the conversations are at the top of that Maslow's pyramid. And so ensuring that we're connecting all of those things, I cannot see how you can do it without multilateralism. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about a better UN, but the idea of no UN uh, as a solution, I think, uh, would be cacophony and would undermine the significant achievements that have been made and are yet to be made. Mm. Just this December, Ghana will be the first country on the continent to host the International Peacekeeping Ministerial. This is the ministerial that, that makes pledges and sets out the framework for global peacekeeping. This, in and of itself, is a landmark achievement. Congratulations to Ghana and the UN will be here to support that process. But imagine a world in which this kind of conversation did not happen. Mm. Um, I don't think we can, we can think of that future. Mm. Imagine a world in which we don't discuss, contestational, contestational as it is, a global financial architecture that enables us to trade fairly among each other. Imagine if we didn't have a space in which we could discuss how to address the existential threat of climate change and agree and negotiate all the different dimensions from mitigation through to adaptation that need to be undertaken at various different levels. So I think a world without a UN 
um, is really an inconceivable world. Yes, exactly. You can't imagine such a world. Agreed. Are you with the masses as they call for reforms of the UNSC? Like, we need reform right now. I, 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 do you support that? I think the secretary call general. Well. The secretary general has been clear. Uh, this every now has and Has been then. very clear on this, and within the UN system, both the secretary general, the deputy secretary general, uh, and all the way down, we, we are all clear. But is there this, the political the, will to get this done? The, the uh, political will resides in the member states. Remember that right. the United Nations is uh, made up of member states, and you know Ghana is a courageous member indeed, and has spoken out. Uh, quite courageously mm. on these big issues, uh, um, the Security Council, um, uh, transformation of the economic uh, and financial model, um, uh, a just transition that actually takes account of developing countries' challenges both on energy poverty on the one hand, but also on dealing with uh, questions of uh, climate change and ensuring that we're not increasing mitigation, on global peace and security. I think these contestations are real and uh, the, the important thing is can we have a forum in which that dialogue happens in a generative way um, and I think globally and this is not just the UN it's many of the conversations mm -hmm. that need to happen uh, I, I certainly am an advocate for what I call generative um, dialogue generative dialogue yes generative dialogue implies that we move beyond you're wrong I'm right I'm right you're mm -hmm. wrong um, I like your idea but uh, to one where we actually hear each other mm -hmm. uh, sufficiently, that we are striving towards this global agreed agenda that we have of peace and security and a more just world where inequality is not, fee is not a thing uh, or is definitely a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time being able to hear that that means different things for different people. Um, in a world in which some of us live in smart houses mm. that actually are able to cook our breakfast before we wake up. There are people who have to wake up at 3 a.m., scavenge all day in order to eat one square meal. That is not a world in which we have treated each other as human beings. To have that dialogue um, requires us to be able to hear each other. Um, and I think that whatever global mechanism uh, and global governance mm. mechanism that the UN is transformed into, indeed, the Secretary General defines it as the UN 2.0. Yes. This UN 2.0 is the space where this kind of dialogue um, should happen. And it's easy to point fingers, but remember that the UN works on the mandate of countries and nation states, uh, and it is that consensus that is the greatest, um, if you like, asset that we bring uh, to the table to support countries to achieve both their national, uh, sub-regional, mm -hmm. regional, and global uh, aspirations in a way that works for everybody. Okay, so I know there is going to be, this is um, a global celebration, so it is celebrated everywhere in the world, um, 78 years of the UN Charter. Um, so let's talk about, obviously you agree with the fact that we, we need reforms at major levels of the operations of the United Nations. Let's talk about what is going to happen during this celebration. So first of all, let me, let me just again say to, to Ghana, we, Ghana is a proud member of the UN and uh, certainly in my tenure here I've felt nothing but support for the UN and the UN systems and annually there's a great uh, celebration. We're excited. There'll be a walk on the 21st. Okay. Uh, there'll be an early morning walk. Make sure everybody comes out for that walk. Um, a, a short six kilometer walk, but an expression of uh, global solidarity. Mm. Um, Ghana will also on the 24th, uh, as it has done, host mm -hmm. uh, the United Nations, the diplomatic uh, and international community, uh, where it hoists the flag and, and reaffirms its commitment. Um, and that evening, um, in collaboration with the government of Ghana, we will hold a, a reception to just celebrate and acknowledge that, to talk about the priorities that are there globally, as I've said, around uh, rebuilding trust and reigniting commitments. And I think for Ghana, the theme uh, is around the push towards the sustainable development goals, rightly so. Um, and then uh, towards the weekend, we'll celebrate the staff. And it's important to celebrate uh, the 1,000 plus uh, UN staff who work across the plethora of, of programs that, that support people from 
the extreme north of the country all the way down here uh, to Accra mm. to just acknowledge that both during COVID and we haven't had that kind of celebration that we acknowledge that they stayed, that they delivered and they supported uh, Ghana and, mm -hmm. and its government and people to achieve things. So an exciting week uh, yeah, of, of activities. With so many activities lined yeah, up yes. and which with a climax on, um, is it 24th? Yes, Tuesday yes. at the Foreign Affairs Ministry, yes. the hoisting of the flags yes, and then the absolutely. reaffirmation. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, last words? <laughs> Last words. Yes, because uh, I know the UN and Ghana um, have a very good relationship. So UN is key in Ghana's um, developmental aspirations. What would be your last words? To so you know, uh, I think it, first of all to say that you know um, the experience of the United Nations in Ghana is, is a positive one, and I think the experience of the of Ghana in the United mm -hmm. Nations uh, is a positive one. Um, we live in, in difficult times, uh, both nationally uh, and in a regional and global context. And it's important to continue to remember that there are ordinary people who are, are being left behind. Um, the recent uh, visit from the IMF affirmed that the prognosis for Ghana's recovery is a good one. Buried in there, though, are questions about ensuring uh, that inequality is being addressed in those big macro figures that uh, programs around social protection, mm -hmm. um, that programs around supporting people, school feeding programs, mm -hmm. etc. The social spending, that the social spending also uh, is prioritized uh, and it happens. And we're confident that this is the case and that we push again to ensure that this will be the case. Um, Ghana's aspiration to uh, achieve self-reliance remains mm -hmm. uh, a bold and important ambition and to assure you that we are working on a UN um, that is fit for business, that is responding to the issues that Ghana has mm -hmm. prioritized at national level and internationally, and that our support is geared towards enabling a whole of Ghana uh, to take control, uh, the government, its citizens through civil society, um, the private sector, and there are many amazing actors in all of those spaces who are playing a role and that the UN is here to support that to happen, not to be at the forefront mm -hmm. of this, but to be um, a facilitator and an, and an enabler um, for the kind of dialogue that is required to enable Ghana lead that journey. And uh, good luck to Ghana, uh, and we continue to support that. Good luck to Ghana. Is the UN collaborating with Ghana um, to solve the areas that are experiencing um, flooding right now as a result of the Volta Akosombo um, spillage. Indeed, uh, indeed we are and uh, our work and support in this area is principally directed through, as I've said, our national, institutions, na national right. institutions through NADMO. I hope that in the next day or so I will personally have an opportunity to go and express solidarity mm -hmm. uh, with the communities um, who are affected by this, that we are keeping a broader picture because although the immediate issues link to the, uh, to the, to the lower end of the Volta, we know that, there, that the issues of flooding affect um, various parts mm. of the country and to keep an eye on those and the numerous other challenges as well. And so I think uh, if we follow our mantra and our watchword, mm -hmm which is to work with the institutions of government, um, the amazing citizens groups that are out there, the private sector, then we will continue to achieve this. Um, and that's our ambition. Thank you very much, Excellency Charles Abani, the UN Residence Coordinator. It's always a pleasure hosting you on our platform. Welcome back from that. That was a very, very um, interesting, thought-provoking moment with the um, residence coordinator of the United Nations to Ghana, His Excellency Charles Abani. I hope you had the opportunity to learn more about the United Nations. Now, away from that, we will be taking you to the Labadi Beach Hotel, where we also had the opportunity to speak with the UN Goodwill Ambassador for the Environment. Um, for Africa, Rocky Dawuni, who is a legend in the music space, and he is um, an advocate of all the issues that are affecting humanity, and he does that 
through his music, he puts all the messages out there for us to know what is happening. Climate change, climate action, sustainable development goal, peace and security, all of that through his music. As part of the commemoration of the 78th United Nations Charter Day celebration, which is happening on Tuesday, we sat with him to delve more into why it is so important for us to use music to send a message to the world for unity and of course for unity peace security and living in harmony it was such a privilege and a great moment with Rocky Dawini I'm gonna take you all the way to the Labadi Beach Hotel enjoy this interview My guest is a global icon with a decade-long career in humanitarianism and environmentalism, lending his voice to amplify issues confronting humanity such as poverty, climate change, women's rights, water and sanitation issues. So Rocky Dawuni, Ambassador Rocky Dawuni is a very good friend of ours. Whenever we need to talk to somebody concerning cultural diplomacy and you know showbiz diplomacy, you name it, he's the person who is usually invited into our studios. But today we are out of our studios and we find ourselves in the open at the Labadi Beach Hotel. Uh, many thanks to management for making the space available for us to sit, relax, you know, breathe some fresh air, the greens, the water body. My goodness it's so therapeutic so we are here to discuss rocky dawuni's latest song shade tree shade tree yeah i'm sure by now you are getting so used to it it's all over on our airwaves and i had the opportunity to listen to it this morning and the lyrics are quite moving and i loved it and rocky was also at the united nations general assembly um, meeting which happened in new york the united states of america this september yeah this past september i know you are wondering what his role at the UNGA was all about. Well, we are here to explore and I'll tell you all of that. We need a very peaceful world, especially in these times. And music can also do the trick. Music can bring us together. Music can unify us in that sense. Rocky Dawuni. Yes. Enough of the talking. Now let's get to it. Yes, my How sister. How are you? I am doing very it's well. It's such a pleasure to have you. A pleasure to Always. see you too in this really incredible you environment. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love, love it. it. You know? Beautiful, the trees, the I know grass. You love nature. Yes, nature is, uh, we are nature. Yeah, we are nature. We are nature. So we have to work very hard to make sure that we preserve it so that it also takes care of us. Hmm. You know, so Talking of preserving the environment yes. or nature. So yes. nature can also take care of us yes. or preserve us. Yes. Let's talk about your mandate as yes. the UN Goodwill Ambassador for the environment. Yes. Is that right? Uh, yes, UNEP Goodwill Ambassador for right. Africa. Yes. For Africa. For environment. Now, yes. so, so let's talk about this mandate. This portfolio is huge. Yes. But then again, it doesn't come as a surprise to many of us because of, you know, how far you've come with your career as a musician, as a global icon. You are very known and you advocate for so many things. In my intro, I was talking about all the, well, these are things that I am familiar with. I'm sure there are so many others that we do not know, which yes. is why we are here today. But let's talk about how important it is for us to take care of the environment. Well, most important thing that we have to know is that, you know, uh, all of us are born and we live and grow uh, in a certain place and mm -hmm. it's a certain space. Mm -hmm. And usually that space is where our family, our friends, and we call it our environment. Mm. And the environment is a place where, you know, the so where we get our sources of food, we breathe the air and all of that. So we are intertwined with the nature and the health of our environment. And it's also a means by which livelihood, you know, uh, also, you know, health mm. and all of that is due to the health of our nature. So. I believe that our responsibility is to make sure that all these gifts that we've been given, all these gifts that we've been blessed mm -hmm. with, all these gifts that sustain us, our responsibility is also make sure that we preserve it and protect it so that it can in its way to 
sustain us as much as it's also going to be there to sustain future generations. Right. And then when you look at your na you know environment, you know, you know we have the water, we have the air, we have the trees, mm. we have the biodiversity, yeah. we have also all the you know f you know flora and fauna that makes it you know all the nature that also is a mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure there's a balance in this. Uh, you know in this space because deforestation you know killing of species mm -hmm. uh, destruction of our waterways air pollution all of these things we found that it there's a big price that we pay you know when it comes to our ability to mm -hmm. sustain you know human generations we need to have all of these areas functioning right. yeah. at optimum and and also in a way too that can help us able to live a fruitful life. Mm -hmm. So for me, these have been things that I have believed in as a person. And throughout my career, I've been a big advocate of that. Through this personal advocacy, mm -hmm. uh, it's what also led me to uh, connecting with the United Nations too, because I've always believed that there are things that I push in my music, but at the same time too, if you want to create impact, there's a need for uh, partnership with organizations that are already, whose intention is already in mm -hmm. that sphere mm -hmm. and who are making mm -hmm. inroads there. And then through that collaboration, you are able to bring a lot more impact and also convert what I say in my lyrics into real world impact. You know, and I think through some of these efforts, we're able to eradicate it here. And, you know, I didn't stop there, you know, I've been also involved in terms of you know HIV AIDS mm -hmm. uh, advocacy, uh, women empowerment and education. So for me, you've done a lot of advocacy in so many it, areas. It's part of it's, it's part what, of what I you do. do. You know, it's part of what I do. It's part of what I feel that um, my responsibility as Using a human your being. your voice to amplify the issues exactly, that humanity is faced with. Exactly. Right. Exactly. In a way that can inspire action, action. towards solution. Right. Yes. Using your voice to amplify for solutions yes. in a way that can also inspire action. Yes. That's, that's wonderful. Rocky, you talked about taking care of the universe, for the universe to be at its optimal, yes. to take care of us. Yes. Um, do you think currently is the universe in a perfect shape? Mm. The universe at its optimum when it comes to taking You know, care when of it us? comes to talking about the environment, you know, I will say that there's a lot of challenges. I mean, you know, when we talk of, I mean, imagine, the United Nations have yes. 193 mm -hmm. member states mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of these nations are operating you know within their national interest to deal with their local problems and then you have the overarching organization mm -hmm. that harmonizes all of these countries and their intentions you know, that's a very sophisticated you know area to navigate you know so when it comes to the issue of climate, I feel that, uh, or the issue of environment, I think that the onus, res, you know, rests on, apart from the proclamations that are made on the highest mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. it's up to nations to implement, mm -hmm. and up to nations in terms of implementing it to, to also spur within their community, you know, various communities to also be able to carry it forth. So it's a very sophisticated, mm -hmm. uh, uh, should I say mandate to to get real time movement, but I think that the intention, especially when it comes to what is going on around the world, you know, uh, we are at a time when industrialization mm. is moving at a very very fast pace, and the cost of industrialization has been, and the cost of economic growth mm -hmm. has been that most countries need resources. Right. And some of these pressures have resulted in, you know, the depletion of their natural resources. You know, pressure on forest, pressure on waterways, and even, you know, when we look at locally in Ghana, when, you know, at first I remember growing up, you know, the oceans, you used to be able to fish. People were always like, got fish from there. Right. Now the fishermen have to go really yeah. far to, 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 to get any kind of fish. So there's a lot of pressure on so many things. So it requires 
new thinking and new ideas as to how we can be able to, first of all, protect what we have mm -hmm. uh, and then also utilize what we have in a way too that is equitably uh, distributed mm -hmm. and then in a, also a way that it will be sustainable. Right. You know, so it requires thinking outside the box and really employing uh, a vast array of knowledge. And that is where indigenous knowledge also mm -hmm. comes in, you know. The tried and tested means of indigenous knowledge, adding it with also scientific innovation, and then also an intention to also make sure that whatever we're doing to will be in tune with nature. Because in the long run, we are natural beings. We are, we are a product of nature. So all our actions has to be in mm -hmm. harmony with nature. Right. And I feel that um, there is a lot that has been achieved, but at the same time too, we are running behind when it comes to being able to achieve some of their goals that have been set forth you know, collectively. Let's talk about <laughs> your role at the UNG. Yes. Usually what do you do around that time? You get so busy. Well, you know, the thing is that uh, a lot of the Goodwill Ambassadors play a very meaningful role during the General Assembly in terms of, you know, events that require their presence mm -hmm. and also events that they also help to amplify. And then um, uh, with myself, you know, there's official roles that, you know, I do in terms of when it comes to UNEP and then also other roles that I'm invited mm -hmm. to uh, other events you know so this year uh, I was actually invited uh, as part of the United Nations Global Compact Initiative uh, the high level event where I participated um, and then uh, I was also um, part of the the halftime uh, show event that was put together to accent the UN global goals, so, so it involved uh, uh, UN Under Secretary, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Deputy Secretary uh, uh, Amina Mohammed, Mia Motley, yeah. and a lot of the other Secretary General, uh, yeah, and a lot of other world leaders mm -hmm. who were there. And um, that event, I did a performance, and also I spoke uh, at that event. And then um, I was also inv involved with um, an initiative that has to be with a Global African Business Initiative, Gabi. And, um, and then also other side events for other organizations. But what happens uh, for me, it's more to be a cultural voice, you know, in the midst of the gathering of all of these world leaders, um, to also be able to share the perspective mm -hmm. of, um, you know, artists and their sensitivity and insight into the everyday problems that are going on because artists are, uh, serve as a conduit between uh, the ordinary person on the mm -hmm, street mm -hmm. and then also the audience you know and wherever they are able to disseminate their message and I feel that artists like myself too who are able to engage the UN on that level uh, are able to you know expand the conversation and give insights to that can be able to help mm -hmm. ideas that are initiated during the General Assembly and then be able to communicate that to to the general public so that is kind of like the role and then also contributing more in terms of culture being an important conduit mm -hmm. to when it comes to cultural diplomacy it's a key part right of peace building right now uh you know they they from the un charter mm -hmm. uh forging global peace and international peace has been one of the cornerstones right. of the united nations and to create that environment, that means that it requires a level of uh, international uh, uh, empathy. And empathy that allows, you know, uh, people to have an insight into various cultures, various countries, and be able to utilize that as a means of also um, bridging the gap of connection hmm. that allows conversations that can be critical when you're dealing with issues of uh, peace mm. so I feel that that perspective is very key and important and so I in the mix am that voice mm -hmm. that also in my connections and conversations right. during that period mm -hmm. to share those insights too with various world leaders and be part of the conversation and be a seat at the table too to be a person that conveys that sentiment 
and add it to the big decisions that are made over there. Cultural yeah. diplomacy is very important when it comes to engagements between countries. Yeah, yeah, it's very key because right now, even when you look at all the global mm -hmm. problems that have morphed into a uh, big, huge international crisis, mm -hmm. at the core point of it is also a crisis of cultural understanding. Right. It's also a understanding. understanding. It's also a crisis of um, lack of empathy. Right. It's also a crisis of, you know, people also, um, you know, holding on to what their clicks, what their views are without permitting other people to also air their views. And I believe that these are fundamental to mm -hmm. so many uh, uh, conflicts that are going on around the world, apart from the historical aspects, which we can still distill to culture. Right. So culture, understanding people, understanding uh, their, 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 their worldview, their perspective, and empathizing with them, and knowing the language and the process by which you can be able to engage them, to also see your perspective, is, is a requisite tool to confront the issues that are confronting our world today right. you know and to also have the plural vision of the world where you see all religions and all cultures also having a space in the bigger conversation is very important and respecting the dignity of all people yeah. without prejudice is also important so i feel that that all those elements are part of cultural empathy and that is an, you know, an area that I feel that my role and my presence mm -hmm. uh, within this, you know, this, this, space. this, this space mm -hmm. allows me to convey and also inspire right. that contributing mm -hmm. to the big decisions that are made on around the world. I am happy you talked about the significance of cultural diplomacy. And we cannot talk about culture without talking about music. Yes. We cannot talk about culture without talking about music. Yes. I think one of the things that has set you apart from the rest is your music. Yes. Um, you do all sorts of songs, yes. right? If I can yes. put it that way. Yes. But what actually sets you apart is the fact that you attribute where you are coming from your identity somehow yes. you found a way to knit your identity into your music yes and so that makes you easily you know you are easily spotted wherever yes. you find yourself yes. i wasn't surprised when um at the united nations general assembly and it, this is one of the things that i have been talking about since like i can't get enough of the reaction when i saw that video when it was sent to me and i saw that video of the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley. Yes. And she was eulogizing you, your song. She took, she borrowed some words from your music for her introductory statement. I asked myself on Monday night as we met to determine the halfway point of the SDG goals, how many roads we have to walk just to make it to the door only to be told that the door is closed those are not my words those are the words of rocky dawuni a famous reggae artist from ghana nominated by m4 for awards multiple times but his words ring because in a very real sense are we going to trod the roads only to be told that it's too late? Too late for us to save as many as we can from the climate crisis. Too late for us to save as many as we can from the conflicts of war. Too late for us to be able to provide the food that so many need as we reflect on the fact that more people are likely to be hungry in this world in 2030 than in 2015, or as we get to the basic numbers that 735 million people suffered chronic hunger last year at a time when so many others had so much 
to throw away and to use? Are we going to be too late for the SDGs that are really the promise of development and the promise of the conferral of dignity on our people? We have today to determine what is the will of this body comprised of the member states to make the fundamental governance changes that will deliver in the third decade of the 21st century. Now this is a global stage where we have the whole world convening yes. and looking for solutions yes. to some of mankind's problems. Yes. And for her to have eulogized you in that manner by bringing out certain key words knitted together yes. from your songs. How was the feeling like for you? You know, the feeling for me was um, that in this time in the history of the world, um, in this time when we are at a crossroads when it comes to um, the issues of in terms of the global goals which uh, the UN had put together as a big broad framework mm -hmm. of trying to deal with various issues, um, there was an overwhelming uh, uh, kind of agreement that the reaching the halfway of their objective of achieving this, ha it had fallen short. Yes. Um, and at a time when the world also is grappling with so various, many distractions, so many distractions security <laughs> issues, uh, wars, conflicts. conflicts, all of these things going on. And I feel those words are you know, there were words too that for me were inspired by a certain perspective of rising above the challenges and also equipping ourselves with a, a resilient mindset of hope, mm. you know, which could be the greatest arsenal that we have or the greatest weapon that we have to confront all the challenges that look unsurmountable. I believe that hope in itself it's a, a, you know, a weapon of now and a weapon of the future. And hope can galvanize all of us into action. Hope can also instill in all of us mm. the, the need to transcend our divisions and our uh, 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 diversity of opinion to harmonize it towards challenges that we feel are gonna affect all of us. You know, so for her to use those words mm -hmm. there for me was timely and a great honor. But it's also a call to action. A call to action. Because a call to action for the world to wake up is that, you know, the, the lyrics were how many roads do we have to walk just to make it to the door only to be told that we were too late. In all global affairs, how many roads of conflict do we have to keep rehashing the mistakes of history and expecting a different outcome? How many times can we let our historic divisions, our religious divisions, be a means to prevent us from coming together and also putting us in a cycle of violence as the only language of communication? How many times can we let our national interests blind us from seeing the collective good that can come from collaborating with everybody in a truthful way? Mm. How many times can the powerful kind of diminish the, 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 the struggling poor of the world without recognizing that they are also part of all of humanity and the basic fundamental rights for all should need to be guaranteed without regards to your race and your identity or your 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 national uh, your nationality mm. so these are all big questions that we need to ask ourselves because in the long run you know we can circumvent everything but the truth always is the truth yeah and i feel that we have come to a point where we have to now start looking at things that will heal the world, will heal the earth, go into historic issues of conflict and try to bring everybody to the table. Mm. 
Because in the long run, a conversation is much more important than annihilation, self-annihilation. With what is happening in Palestine and then Israel, um, you wake up and you see civilians being killed, children being killed, wounded, with hospitals being bombarded and, you know, um, with it's so it's it's a very very serious situation that when one sits down to try to even process you you simply cannot conclude in any way as a human being and 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 that's where i agree with you that we need to come together lay aside our differences and 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 rather build something good for our, ourselves now on the brighter side of life as yes. we wrap up on the brighter side of yes. life I yes mean, we yes need to yes keep the 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 the, the light burning well that's why i'm talking about need, hope yes, hope is right. our I'm take, I'm most important to, arsenal it is yes. the most important arsenal is hope Let, let's talk about shade tree yes. shade tree yes. your new song yes Shade, is it a single or it's, it's a an, single it's an album? yes when i saw the video i was completely blown away by the 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 bliss yes of, of the entire presentation the message the yes. message of hope yes. the message of dialogue yes the message of let's get back to the table yes like we just mentioned yes you know, the shade uh, tree the shade tree the shade tree is the tree that everybody can go and you know share that space and be protected and it doesn't matter where you're coming from or who you are and you know in traditional african uh, village setups most of the time you go our communities there are trees there and main trees that everybody converges and meets it's a place where uh you know when conflicts are resolved mm -hmm. it's a place where Partnership, our partnerships are, are created, our differences are resolved. <laughs> partnerships are created. Uh, partnerships are created, you know. And even when you look at the United Nations, the United Nations is the shade tree for global oh, peace, where everybody is welcome to sit underneath it and air your perspective and be part of the conversation. So this song for me, at a time when the world needs harmony and unity, is a song that calls for that all of us to move from where we are and come into uh, a space where nobody judges you mm. but just by being here you have a right to a seat there and you have a right to voice who you are mm. and also dialogue as a means you know the song says that let's talk about it under the shade tree and it. one of the one of the so it's like no matter what the difference the issues are yeah come let's sit down and talk about it mm. under the shade tree where we all enjoy we are all under one shade and one of the lyrics too uh, is that we are one but we are not the same yeah we are one it's, but we are not the it's same. it's also a matter of we right. have to celebrate the diversity of nature yeah. the diversity of the environment the diversity of who we are the diversity of our national identities, the diversity of our cultural identities. You know, it's all, but we, have, we are connected by the oneness mm. of humanity. But at the same time, we are separate and different in our ways. And I believe that when we start doing that, we elevate a new philosophy of global empathy mm. that could be key to addressing the issues and challenges that we are facing right now. So Shade Tree mm -hmm. is a song of the times. It's a song to call on humanity as the primary objective of all of us. And it's also to call us from wherever our issues are, our problems are, our reservations are, our perspectives mm -hmm. are, and all of us into a space where we can all talk about it and come to a conclusion that is harmoniously good for all of us. All too soon. This is where time will allow us. It's been such a good time with you as always. Thank you so much for your time and we look forward to hosting you again same time next week. You can always watch the show on our social media platforms, Facebook and YouTube and on Pan-African Television. My name is Harriet Nighty. The show is Diplomatic Affairs. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Bye.